Hello and welcome to another session of Cujo Sound and Why Noise Trash. I'm Bjorn Jacobson, and this here is the Why series that I've been working on. Um, in the previous episode, we were taking a look, good look at just basic introduction to uh, to events and basic audio stuff in a random container. And in this episode, we're going to take a good look at a sequence container and what we can do about it. Because you may have an environment in your game where you don't have triggers every time the character is taking a step. So you need Ys to do the triggering for you. And let's see what we can do with that. Even combine it with a bunch of um, a bunch of random containers that we learned about in the previous episode. So one smart thing is that, as you can see here, we have the boots that we made in the previous episode. We can drag and drop our... Instead of drag and dropping all the files individually, we can drag and drop the entire container, the entire folder here, just into our work unit. And it'll ask, what do you want it to be? And we want it to be a sequence container. So it will automatically create a sequence container for you with all these files inside. It's really nifty, especially if you're importing a lot of things at the same time. Now, in this case, rename this one here and call it boot sequence. Just as before, we have our play event here called playfs. This triggers the, the random container, which is there. You can always right click and say find in Project Explorer. And this over here is sync group one. It's marked by a small one up here. And the, this over here is number two. So you can always say that you want to see it in sync group one and it'll find it for you. So here we have our new sequence container. And if we press play on this one, nothing will happen so far because there's nothing in it. There's nothing in the playlist down here of what we want it to do. So basically if we could just drag and drop all these over here and if we press play, it plays one because we have it is automatically set to step. So the next time we press play on it, it should play the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. We can also set it to continuous, then it will play through all of them for us without clicking more than once. If we set it to loop, it will loop the whole thing over and over and over again. We can set it to transitions so that it has a small transition between them. Let's make it 0 0.1 second. And that way we have a, a loop that just continues and there, there are no clicks in the end. There shouldn't be clicks anyway, but now it'll make a small crossfade. Sounds great, triple A quality already. Um, now the thing is that you can make it go reverse, you can make it do things, and you can also randomize the duration of the crossfade that we made here. Now, how about instead of a sequence, we create a new child, which is a random container. We call it left boot, and another one called right boot. We move the first four into left boot, and the other four into right boot. Now we have created the left boot and the right boot. We can now drag and drop them over here in our playlist. And now whenever we press play on our sequence, it'll be a continuous and it'll be looping and it'll loop between the two random containers and not each and every one of these. So these random containers will now trigger to the rules that we have set in here. And we, let's say we want to avoid, doesn't want the previous two to be played and we don't we want a slight bit of pitch change on this one. And how about the other one? We want it to be maybe different. Let's say minus 300 and 300. So now we have created the left boot and the right boot. That's one way to create a sequence. Now it sequences between our two random containers. Now this can also be done by, instead of randomizing between left and right boot, you could also make it sequence between the individual parts of an actual sound. So if we sort of moved all of the 
this here back out into the sequence and see your left here, left boot and right boot. Get rid of these so that it doesn't do anything. Now let's, how about we make a, another sequence container here, that which we call heel and toe. And inside it, we make a random container, one that's called heel and one that's called toe. We want this here to play heel and then toe. We want it to be continuous, but we don't want it to loop. So now we will play heel and toe every time this event is triggered, this thing is triggered. So let's say we drag all eight of these in here in heel. Now if you click the file over in the asset side of things, over in, in audio, you can always double click here. And this gives you a small editor window. window. <clears throat> so let's say we cut all these in half. At least take away the first part of the transition, or the, the first part of the sound here, so that we only have the first part left. You can, you can then, whenever you click these afterwards, it will automatically change in the window here. So let's, let's do like this. And like this. If it's possible for you to do this in the actual asset so that you don't, so that you have two assets, one with the heel and one with the toe, instead of doing it the way I do it right now, then it's better because this becomes, this creates a dependency, which means that if you change the raw material, it won't work anymore, or it, it will, but if you change the timing just the slightest, then it won't. Now, now we have all these files here, which all have, these, these are basically all the heels that we have. So if we copy paste these into toe, this is just a control C and control V to copy and paste. Now in here, um, let's just say we now have a toe instead. There we go. Now we have eight heels and eight toes, which means that instead of randomizing just between the individual assets and randomizing in pitch, we are now also randomizing between the beginning of the one file and the ending of another file. Now, of course, we haven't polished this, so I doubt it'll be super perfect while we play it, but that means that now that we have, now we have eight times eight variations instead of just eight randomized ones. So if we go back here, so now we have, here in our heel toe, we could say that if we look at the boot sequence, it should play heel and toe, and it should do so continuously in loop. It's a little fast, but it plays the heel and toe. We can also just do it here in heel and toe if we press play here. And the same thing goes when you want to attach an event to these. You can double click your event and simply just drag and drop the sequence over here. And then it works. Triple A quality, like I said, super polished sound, but you get the picture, I hope, how sequence containers now work, also in combination with random containers. It's a fairly simple trick to do to get a lot of variation put into sounds without having to add thousands of assets. You can buy having eight assets create eight times eight variations very simply by having, by not using any more space, you don't use any more memory, you don't use, well, maybe you do, but it's insignificant the amount of extra CPU power used to actually deal with this. And that's how basic sequence containers work. Let's move on to something else and see how we can do it. We'll be working a little bit with switch containers so that we can actually try and change the different types of boots that we have on the fly while you're playing. Until next time.